Guatemala, littered with ancient wonders, temples which pierce its dense canopy, all once declared as separate structures. Modern technology, however, has shown that these structures, mostly now submerged by dense undergrowth, was once one huge mega-metropolis, with Tikal in particular also once containing a plaque displaying a great deluge, with the site submerged in what is depicted as a cataclysm, with a volcanic eruption also in the background of said image. With mysterious megaliths still found littering the foliage, one site in particular, it would seem, evaded destruction, and the subsequent rainforest creeping grip which has consumed much of this enormous ancient site. Known as Kirigua, it remains virtually untouched, yet the most intriguing thing regarding this site, apart from its superb preservation, are the enigmatic stone carvings not only found at the site, but throughout the jungle itself. Statues and megaliths, presumably often depicting queens and kings in strained contraptions, seemingly familiar in form to modern vehicles or the interiors of an aircraft. Once claimed as mere signposts, the sheer abundance of these mystifying tributes, however, now makes this explanation unlikely. For even if merely artistically inspired, what do they depict? Why would an ancient civilization show such passion in casting these particular-looking technological devices into massive stones all over the Guatemala rainforest? With Kirigua thankfully so well preserved, we can explore a number of these baffling carved megaliths in detail. Were they trying to tell future generations something? Did they find something crashed within the forest, possibly documenting a find and proposed purposes upon these stones? Did they witness a form of craft take to the air and seemingly into the heavens? Could this have been the inspiration for why leaders of these tribes would want to be immortalized in carved, similar-appearing machines, in the hope of eternal life or indeed a craft capable of transporting them into the heavens? Vast questions still surround this ancient civilization's knowledge, one now known to have been over 10 million strong. Did this enormous, once incredibly powerful ancient civilization get visited by beings from another planet? Possibly found a crashed craft? One they attempted to depict a reverse engineering of? The fact that many depict what modern man would perceive as complex craft concepts, many find highly intriguing. We also find these massive stone megaliths, the efforts undoubtedly applied to create them, their source inspiration, and indeed the images they depict, by a civilization we now know were undeniably advanced and extremely ancient, once lost for millennia, and only now being rediscovered highly compelling. There are many baffling, anomalous artist depictions that litter the megaliths all over the rainforest which now submerge the super-civilization or mega-metropolis which was once known as the Mayans. Pekal's tomb and the strange rocket designs we have shared before, location now unknown, the seal seemingly showing a craft of ancient high technology Indeed, not to mention his choice to have a vivid green death mask. All mere coincidence? Even the stolen plaque, fortunately photographed before its mysterious theft, depicting a doomsday event. Volcanic eruptions in the background, with drowning natives, which accompanied a mass submersion found and subsequently stolen from Tikal. Mere coincidence? Yet, with all these compelling pieces of evidence, all these artistic accounts, whether through cover-up or lack of discovery and accurate artistically created depiction. Of this event of a peaceful trade via ancient alien contact, 
What the argument needed to become unarguable may have just been discovered deep in the Mayan rainforests. Accurate depictions created in brittle yet precious jade tablets of considerable proportions. Artistic interpretations of these events and the giving of gifts actually once occurring. A statement released by Julia Levy, the Minister of Tourism for the Mexican state of Campache, Luis Augusto Garcia Rosado, the highest-ranking government official to go on record confirming the discovery of this possible extraterrestrial life, said, quote, Guatemala, like Mexico, home to the ancient yet advanced Mayan civilization, has also kept certain provocative archaeological discoveries classified, and now believes that it is time to bring forth this information. Rosado spoke of contact, quote, between the Mayans and extraterrestrials, supported by translations of certain codices which the government has kept secure in underground vaults for some time. In a telephone conversation with the rap, he also spoke of, quote, landing pads in the jungle that are 3,000 years old, end quote. Although much of the world has focused their attention and awe upon the unquestionably advanced ancient feet of the ancient pyramids of Giza, Mexico, along with most of Southern America, also possesses many equally astonishing feats of a now lost ancient civilization. Gigantic cities perfectly created to house those who built them, along with what is probably the most significant of ruins, now known as the modern Mexico City, it was once the origins of the settlement itself. Although the age is unknown, this magnificent and mysterious place was once known as Tenochtitlan. Quoted as the Venus of the Aztecs, an ancient capital of the Aztec Empire, it initially started as an isolated settlement, created on natural islands within the Lake Texcoco. What makes it special, however, is that it eventually expanded out, with the now lost builders of the site constructing an entire city's foundations complete with giant pyramidal structures upon artificially constructed floating islands. It contained the Palace of Montezuma II, said to have once consisted of over 300 rooms, as well as hundreds of other temples of considerable proportions. It was eventually destroyed by the Spanish conquistadors under Hernán Cortés in 1521. At the time, this amazing floating city had an estimated population of 400,000 people. It eventually spread over onto neighboring lakes and also the land surrounding them, covering a span of 5 square miles. It was connected to the mainland by several causeway dikes that terminated in smaller lakeside urban communities. Along with the many pyramid temples, the original construction is still highly debated, clearly due to its inexplicable architectural design and the clear advanced capabilities of its creator, one which does not coincide with the modern paradigms of history. The great market in the barrio of Tlatelolco was reported by the Spaniards to have had at least 60,000 buyers and sellers on the main market day. How did a claimed primitive culture create such an astonishing artificial island city, in addition to the ancient pyramids which surrounded it? It was undoubtedly a place which we would have found highly compelling. This ancient cemetery within present-day Hungary has perplexed anthropologists for the past few decades. Amongst the remains of some 51 individuals was the discovery of many apparently human yet elongated skulls. Although many elongated skulls unearthed around the world are mysteriously absent human skull napping, Indicative of skull binding, an ancient practice once initiated at a young age. These skulls, however, do appear to have these natural human napping patterns. Yet the mystery of their origins, even after DNA sequencing, has merely deepened. Individuals including adult males, females, and children had, quote, artificially deformed skulls with depressions shaped by bandage wrappings, end quote making this place one of the largest concentrations of this cultural phenomenon ever found in Europe. Curiously, the strontium isotope ratios here are significantly more variable than those of other remains, 
including animal and prehistoric burials, which have since been uncovered in the same geographic region. This indicating that these mysterious people lived elsewhere during their childhood, yet where they originally came from remains a complete mystery. Furthermore, carbon and nitrogen isotope data attest to remarkable contributions of millet in their diet, although all the remains have now been dismissed as human. Intriguingly, some photographic studies of certain remains of particular interest are yet to be publicly disclosed. If human origins indeed be the case, it still does not answer the question as to where this ritual originated from, or why it seemingly permeated many of the world's countries, such as Germany, Malta, Russia, Hungary, along with many others. Were these ancient people trying to emulate a now lost civilization? Possibly unknown ancient beings, they and many others throughout antiquity, not only perceived as, but depicted as gods? Additionally, why are there so many mysteries surrounding this practice? Why is there such mystery surrounding the crystal skulls? And why are so many skulls we have personally examined seemingly absent normal human growth patterns? Were ancient aliens possibly found amongst these individuals within Hungary? We find the ongoing discovery highly compelling. Elongated skulls, along with their origins, are undoubtedly one of the most heavily debated areas within modern archaeology. Many independently funded researchers who have explored and subsequently exposed vast arrays of unusual and as yet inexplicable features surrounding a particularly few examples of these intriguing and incredibly puzzling artifacts. For regardless of known head-binding practices, a well-studied and historically an extremely common practice, thus one which modern science has an extensive understanding of, including the effect this had on the shape of the skull, makes any skull which endured these traditions are easily to identify post-mortem. The most commonly found incorporated wooden boards pressed upon the head, creating large, flat areas along the frontal lobes. Pressing the brow area of the skull upward, this malformation creates a crease or bulge near the normal napping areas of the skull, as seen in these photos of remains currently claimed as a suspected alien found in Croatia. Yet due to this knowledge of malformation, we can easily identify that it is indeed of a homo sapien. This so-called crease is easily identifiable upon bone structure. However, as previously mentioned, there exists a particular few whose remains not only have an elongated cranium, but the individuals in which they belong not only possess said craniums undeniably formed via natural processes, but are identical in appearance to millions of witness testimonies describing what we all now know as the greys. With huge eyes, long wide craniums, frames of a tiny stature and micro-thin pelvis, Remains of tiny humanoids, possibly visitors to our planet, who may have crashed here, subsequently marooned upon our planet, is an account which has been told before. We have in the past explored the compelling story surrounding the Dropa discs, an ancient upark that, according to a number of individuals who have examined and tested them, tell this exact tale. Long barrows, granges, earthworks, and henges found across the United Kingdom, all have rumors surrounding long-headed skulls being covered up after having been found at the sites. Passionately protected from trespassers, a vast number of the largest barrows have never been opened. Twelve-ton stones blocking the entrances, clearly suggesting they are buildings of tremendous importance, but without enormous multi-million pound machinery, permits, and most importantly, permission from the landowners, Conveniently, all these incredible undug sites are set on private lands. We will probably never find what's inside, but many rumors abound, like those which circle Bella's Nap, tales which tell of more elongated skulls exhumed from the surrounding Earth during a normal archaeological exploration. Yet regardless of this seemingly meticulous suppression in the UK, an incredible find 
has nonetheless been unearthed in Crimea. Many of the intriguing features of the remains are the same characteristics which gave rise to the elongated skulls of Peru's popularity. Yet this skull still possesses its tiny, complete skeleton. The eye sockets, which once housed the creature's eyes, were enormous, and although the entire frame of the creature is of a small size, the lack of a pronounced pelvis would have made them very slender and would have emphasized the size of the cranium. It is a strong candidate for the only complete elongated skull remains in existence. We find the elongated skull highly compelling. The figurines of Ocambaro a series of artistically driven figurines that perplex all who have the opportunity to examine them. They were discovered by German Waldemar Julstrold in July of 1944 within Acambaro, Mexico. They represent, among other things, unknown camels, animals, enormous ancient reptiles, and possibly even aliens. Various examples from the collection are currently on public display at the Museum of Acambaro. Charles Hapgood, historian of science at Keene College in New Hampshire, best known for his discoveries regarding the Piri Reis maps and ancient Antarctica, has also supported the claim that the figurines are genuine ancient artifacts, which show extinct animals, miniature goblin-esque creatures, and quite possibly ancient extraterrestrial beings. Due to these claims, and the many skeptics who were ferociously arguing against such a posit, Official radiocarbon dating was arranged and conducted in the late 60s, using organic materials from their surfaces. However, to academia's chagrin, the results indicated dates of around 6,500 years old, this based on three samples. Yet, amazingly, the results were ignored in favor of persistence, that they are nothing but modern souvenirs, made for the tourist industry. None of the publicly displayed examples resemble any known extinct dinosaur. Instead, it is suggested that they are representations of once-living animals. Although the carbon dating had proven their authenticity, skeptics were still arguing that they were a modern hoax. A few years later, thermoluminescent tests were agreed upon by all, as being sufficient enough to establish the figure's approximate date of manufacture. So, in 1972, Froelich Ramey of Pennsylvania Museum conducted this analysis. He also obtained dates of well over 4,500 years. Indeed, even their excavation was observed by a trained archaeologist known as Charles de Peso. It seems that no matter what certain individuals try in their attempts to discredit the authenticity of the Acambaro figures, all they seem to accomplish is validating them further. Although some of the more compelling figures have disappeared over the years, the vast portion of these mysterious and perplexing artifacts remain on public display. Who made the Acambaro figures? What do most of them depict? With attitudes as they are within mainstream academia, it's a battle to establish the facts surrounding such relics. A battle we are slowly winning. <laughs>